What's going on, everybody, and welcome into today's show. I'm so glad that you are here. Father Anthony and I had a blast recording this episode. This uh, this middle segment, the second of the three segments, we had so much fun uh, essentially deciding which biblical characters we would sit with in our high school lunch cafeteria. Uh, it was so much fun. We hope that you guys enjoy it. Uh, I also have a thank you to you guys. Um, the last you know couple of months, we've been talking about uh, the need for some financial assistance in order to uh, purchase a new editing computer and recording computer because the one that we're recording on right now, it's it's literally on its last leg. Like it's barely able to do any of the things that I need to do. And as you guys know, the biggest part of our ministry other than this show is editing um, other Catholic podcasts. So I asked you guys if you could donate and you did. So thank you so much. We just purchased the new uh, recording and editing computer. It'll be here early next month. And I am so excited and uh, really, really looking forward to it so that I'm not angry every time I try to edit something. So thank you guys so much. Um, if you would like to uh, continue to support Forte Catholic financially, we are a, a Catholic nonprofit. Um, you can do so at ForteCatholic.com slash donate if you enjoy the show. Uh, for one-time things like this computer, we also had to buy a new projector recently for some of our live events that are coming back. Um, so one-time gifts are very welcome, but also just to help us pay the everyday bills, monthly donations are phenomenal as well. We hope that you guys enjoy today's show. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know how to end that. What's up? And welcome to Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Stroll, and that is Father Anthony Sharapa. Hello, friend. Hello, Taylor. How you, you doing, know the, man? I'm doing great. You know the last time I spoke to you? Last time we podcasted. A month ago, the last time we did a podcast together. Like, yeah. people listening to the show know that, like, I mean, I've, I've mentioned on the last couple of episodes, like, things have been really busy for me. So it's not it's not a one-way street. This is a two-way mm -hmm. street that we keep missing each other on. Yes. Um, but, like, you know, one of the things that we usually do together is, like, play video games. I just played a video game yesterday for the first time and you know three weeks <laughs> so yeah. you know it's been it's been busy but uh what have you been yeah. up to i miss you <laughs> yeah a lot of pair stuff this is just a busy place uh so just all that there's a lot more stuff in the evenings too here that i have to do now we started up rcia so it takes away one of my evenings it's all good and then uh just this week i was able to sneak away for a couple of days to visit my uh friend father harrison who is uh down in dc so we all crashed at a mutual uh friend's place uh, hung out with their family, played some Wii Bowling, watched a movie, opened up some baseball cards. Uh, it was a good time. Like a new pack of baseball cards or like old ones you found? No, a new pack of baseball cards. Bought some oh. comic books. We had a grand old time. That sounds fun and it was. silly. It was all, yes, it was both of those things. <laughs> you and Father Harrison went on a 12-year-old's dream vacation together. <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of like, you know. Me, Father Harrison, uh, the dad there, and he's got like two boys as well. So we all were just kind of having a great time doing what we wanted to do. <laughs> oh, well, good. I'm glad you got some time away uh, yeah. amidst all of the, the busyness, which is what we talked about last week. So we're not going to talk about too much of it now. But um, in, a, in a similar vein, I've been thinking a lot about like this last month with it being busy. And we'll transition into this. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about is... I am doing a because because like as I've talked about it on the podcast or just in like normal life, people are like, oh, like, you know, we're glad work is going well. We're glad you have a ton of work, but we're also like worried about you because you have been like really busy and like like to start the week. I had three 14 hour days in a row, like just very busy. Um, but it's this weird. It's not like 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 I know life isn't going to be like this forever like even if nothing changed like we're going to talk about me like hiring some people but even if nothing if i didn't hire anybody things would start to slow down here soon it was just this perfect storm of everybody needed everything all at one time so i had to get it done and traveling started again blah 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 but one of the things that has been keeping me busy is i've been in the process of hiring two new like audio editors as contractors like to help me like help offload some of my audio editing work. 
Yeah. And you have done some audio editing before. I have done in some, yes. <laughs> yeah, for uh, you know, once or twice on Clerically yes. Speaking, and then that mm-hmm. other podcast that you did, the Desert Fathers one that lasted, you know, three weeks or whatever it was. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, audio editing takes time. And, it does. Um, you know kind of what I can do, and you know exactly what you can do audio editing-wise. How many hours do you think it would take to get you to around my level? Of audio editing. Oh, how many hours? Um, if I had someone, so I've gotten slightly better over the few times I've done it, but that's only very, very, very slightly. Um, it would take a lot of hours, I think. I would need a lot of practice. Um, it would take like weeks, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, it just like it's it's a skill. It's it's something that you, yeah. So you think in a few weeks of working on it, you can be as good at me as me as somebody who's been doing it for 12 years is what you just said. I think if I was editing podcasts every day with a coach, then I could get to a level that other people wouldn't notice a difference. Okay. I, and, and that's that's the goal of, of hiring and training these people, right? Yes. It's where it's like, I know what I can do and I'm very good at it. Um, and people are, are hiring for the Catholic because they know that it comes with a certain level of professionalism when it comes to audio editing and so it's like i have to get these people to the point where they are 80 85 90 95 percent as good as as if i was doing it myself to where yeah nobody nobody would notice like it's it and like even as i'm training people because i've trained a couple people i've had i've had two other contractors that worked with me last year and then two the two now and it's like you know my clients expect Right. The level that I can do. Right. So as I'm training, by the way, <laughs> the 10,000 hours thing, you've heard that from Malcolm Gladwell, like you need yeah. 10,000 hours to be, that sounds like a huge number. I did the math the other day because I was thinking about this, like, oh, how do I get somebody who knows audio editing, but not quite at the level as I do? How do I catch them up to speed? I, so I did 10,000 divided by 40. It's like a 40 hour work week. Yeah. It's it's only 25 weeks. So Malcolm is saying that you can become a master of something in half of a year, which is <laughs> like I, I, I like in my mind I just figured 10,000 hours like oh 10 years. No. Nope. Yes, yes. <laughs> 25 weeks. Um so it's it's this thing where I'm having to put in a lot of work now cuz essentially I have over doubled my workload when it comes to hiring these new people. Because I've I've had to put in the time to talk with them, get them set up as 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 employees, um, train them, like sh- sh- you know, sit through an hour, hour and a half like Zoom session, train them, show them how I do stuff, and then let them go and do it. And like speed wise, like professional editors, audio editors take it's it's like two to two and a half amounts of of uh, two and a, two to two and a half times the amount of raw audio. Meaning, mm-hmm. if it's an hour, it should take me about two to two and a half hours. Yeah. Well, they're, they're not as fast as I am, so I'm having to pay them for like four hours of work when I could do it in two, right? Yeah. So I'm having to like pay into it and spend over the time. You said you were going to say something. I was going to say, I remember because uh, I had the goofy, uh, I did a goofy little fun project podcast with a review of Wendy's, the Spicy Nugs podcast. And like each episode was like 15 minutes. It took me like three hours yeah. to edit 15 minutes of audio. It would take me 30 minutes, <laughs> <laughs> maybe 40, because yes. yeah, some of it's you know, fixing the audio and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm having to put in extra time, the training time. And then also because like my, tr- my like I am still the, uh, you know, like quality control person. Cause like before I submit it to the clients, I, if it's new editors, I have to go through and listen. I'm essentially re-editing everything at the beginning. Yeah. I'm going through re-editing, sp- listening to every second of the audio, fixing fixing issues um, th- that maybe they, you know, like mistakes that they made or like uh, fixing things that they didn't fix, right? But right. I have done this process before. Um, last year, there was, there, was, there was a lady that helped me for about a year and... It took some time. It took the training time and paying her, you know, for four hours when it should have taken about two ultimately. Right. But the first month, like I was listening to every single second of what she was doing. And then uh, after like she, she's, she has like a history of doing some audio stuff too. So it was more just kind of getting it how I like how I like it. Yeah. And then the next month was like, I would listen to the first 30 minutes 
And I'd give a feedback on one or two things like, hey, I listened to the first 30 minutes. It's not huge enough to change, but like, hey, just keep an eye on this or an ear yeah. on this in the future, right? And then the next month, it's like I would listen, I would post it and listen to the finished product for like the first five to 15 minutes. Sounds great. And then so I didn't have to like have the 100% oversight, right? Right. Which like you don't want a boss to micromanage. You want to be able to hire people to do things well. Um, but, you know, you also have to quality control and protect your <laughs> reputation. So, but ultimately, it got to the point where after about two, three months, it was saving me time, mm -hmm. saving me a little bit of money. Um, and I was able to, because like right now, it's just me, right? Like where it's like, I, I only have a limited amount of hours and energy. So yes. it'll get to the point with these two new guys that it was with her, that this will pay off eventually. It'll pay off primarily with time that's the biggest thing it's just taking things off my plate so i can focus on other things but right now i'm in the midst of training both of them and still doing every second of what they're doing and doing all of my work on top so that's one of the reasons that i've been busy um, so what do you think about that whole concept of like oh you know i'm gonna sacrifice for this time but knowing or or hoping it's not yes. it's not uh some of it's not locked in it's not like they're gonna stay around forever the last they didn't stay around forever so for the hope of a benefit later, I'm doing a lot of work now. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've definitely experienced that in different ways just in, in my priesthood. Um, You're and, a priest? And, yeah. No, oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, just one, one, to, <laughs> one little example uh, is just in liturgy stuff. Uh, so this parish, I'm very grateful. <laughs> actually, it's nice that the other priests have put in a lot of work because I'm new here to train altar servers, sacristans, all the stuff where I can just show up and everything's ready. Everything's done. The servers, no matter how old they are, do an excellent job. And I remember just being at my last parish because you know, a lot of stuff, COVID stuff, whatever. Like I had to do and think and just exhaust myself so much more. And like the altar servers, it wasn't something that they were helping to serve the mass. It was more like me telling them what to do. And I could have just done it myself a lot sooner. It's like so right. just chaotic. <laughs> and and then, like you can't enter into prayer as much and all this stuff. So I've experienced it in that. Um, uh, how, um, and also like training people to do things that you might be good at or competent at, but you just don't enjoy doing. Uh, so like just having that off your plate, uh, is a great thing as well, but yeah, uh, it takes, it takes time. And also you don't always know if it's going to pay off if someone needs to leave or whatever and you have to do it again. But in general, um, it's putting in that work right away. And going through that more difficult time, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a good idea. It makes sense to me. I don't know. It is opening up something for me that it's it's a, it's the next level of something that I have shared already on the show. This was maybe two years ago when I started doing audio editing like professionally. I had been yeah. doing it for myself for forever and doing it at where I was working for forever. Mm -hmm. But it was just like it was this huge realization that I have this skill that I had never monetized. Yeah, I had never been like, hey, audio editing is probably the thing that I'm best at. I'm pretty good at a lot of stuff. I'm pretty good at giving talks, pretty good at doing podcasting, pretty good at you know, uh, music and pretty good at, you know, a few things. But like audio editing is probably the thing that I'm best at. It's just the least known because like literally my job in that is to like leave no trace that I was ever there. Right. right. You know, like, um, so that was like this huge revelation. And now like that was two years ago. And now that's led to where I have over 20 clients that I'm working with. And I'm like, it's the primary thing that I'm doing with my life right now is mm -hmm. doing production for other people. And it's like paying my, you know, it's my salary. It's paying for my family. It's a ministry. Like I'm able to help all of these people. But that ministry piece was the second piece that like just hit like in the last month yeah. where I, I feel so stupid that I never realized this before. The whole reason that I, like most of, a lot of what I'm doing in my life, the majority of my work every week is audio editing. Mm -hmm. I got started in that one because like I was studying it in college, but the number one reason that I'm doing this now is because I learned how to do audio editing, doing an internship for the Catholic radio station in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. That guy spent time with me to train me. I had never done it before. He sat down with me. He trained me. He, sh he showed me how to, to how, how to run the board. He showed me how to record commercials. He showed me how to edit myself into commercials, add music. He showed me how to edit talks. He showed me how to do all this stuff, right? 
And he spent that month with me, like kind of looking over my shoulder. And then it got to the point where like the next nine months, the next year, I was like, I saved that man so much time. Yeah. Like, he didn't have to do, he didn't have to make any commercials. I made all of them. He didn't have to edit much. <laughs> I started doing and it freed him up to go do other stuff, right? Because that radio station was a one man show. Does this sound familiar at all? <laughs> you know? Yes. 12 years later, I am that man. You know? Yes. So, um, I started realizing that, like, because, like, oh, the first thing is like, oh, let's monetize this, right? Because, like, I need to provide my family. That was the first thought. Sure. But it never occurred to me how. Training someone to do how th this specific thing that is a niche in the Catholic world. I'm happy it's a niche because it's why everybody comes to me to do all this stuff. So, yeah. you know, at some point, um, if I start, you know, really training people, I'll put myself out of a job and that'll suck. But, yeah. <laughs> but the positive side of like, I, I have been training people. My last job was primarily like doing, like doing like kind of the direct ministry, giving talks and those sorts of things, traveling, talking to people. But like my primary behind the scenes job, which like my primary behind the scenes job now is editing. My yeah. primary behind the scenes job there was training youth ministers. I had learned how to do youth ministry forever and I trained them how to do youth ministry. And like that was my ministry. Yeah. And like them doing that ministry was an extension of me helping them. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I'm so stupid that it took me this long to put those two things together where like, oh, my entire ministry now is built on this guy 15 years ago teaching me how to do this audio editing. Yeah. Like what I'm doing now is part of the ministry. It's not a thing just to help me save time and, and, and save money and all those sorts of things. It is like I'm training these two guys who really want to do this with their with their lives, at least on the side. One of them maybe professionally. One of them at least on the side as part of his ministry. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing that I did when I was doing the youth ministry stuff. I just never saw it as a ministry. I'm such a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no argument here. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's it's well, it's things like you realize, I think, more and more, and I think this kind of theory of ministry is, is taking on more and more, um, how important it is not just to minister to people, but how to train people to minister to people. And even training people to minister to people is a kind of ministry. Right. In seminary, we talked about like empowering the laity and all this stuff. All it means is like giving people the tools, making them realize the tools they do have, caring for them, because that's a big thing. Like someone cares about your work. They care about you, what you're doing. Um, training them to help others, helping them out when they come into difficulty. Like a lot of, you know, I do a lot of spiritual direction, but I couldn't do that without having good spiritual directors who have helped me out and I bounce ideas off them. And now yeah. a lot less. You know, it's very rarely I have to go to them to be like, hey, this is a situation. How should I handle this or that or other thing? Um, and then you just kind of keep making people who can help other people. And it's great. I've made three people. How many have you made? <laughs> uh, not as, I mean, you know, it, it's it's not apple. It's got apples and oranges a little bit here. <laughs> I get what you're saying, though. Um, so, yeah, it's just this huge thing of like, oh, like, I've been doing this thing and not realizing it's just a mind shift, right? I'm doing the same thing, but it's just like, I've been doing this to get stress off my plate to, you know, but ultimately it's like, Oh, this is that, that is still true, but it's like, this is also part of the ministry. And it's just, it's just a, a different, it's different than like the front facing ministry that I'm used to. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's so similar to like that youth that training people, how to do youth ministry or whatever. So um, the second thing, like on the same train of thought is when I'm busy, one of the first things to go is like me taking care of myself physically. Like, yeah. La la lack of sleep, eating like crap. Like I don't have time to like eat well. So DoorDash has become my best friend and all this. Mm. And like working out goes out the window. Right. Which, you know, <laughs> snowballs into stress building because I'm not eating well and I'm not working out and I'm not sleeping great and all these things. Right. Uh, it's the opposite. So I talked about like, oh, I'm putting in a lot of work right now to reap the rewards later. Yes. But it's like also during this time, I'm not working out and I'm gaining weight and that's going to reap the <laughs> negative rewards later where like <laughs> when things aren't as crazy, I'm going to have to work extra hard then to lose weight, to eat better, to start working out again and all those sorts of things. So like it's working both positively and negatively at the same time. Yeah, I definitely have more experience with the negative. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. <laughs> and a little bit, of this, it's it's also just similar to procrastination or just doing the things that I know I need to do to have my life organized. So if I take the time to 
uh, really look at my schedule, plug everything in right away. That's the biggest thing for me is like, as soon as I know that I have to do something, putting it in my calendar. And, I, and that, that it's so funny because that annoys me so much. I don't want to do that. But I know if I have everything plugged in, my week goes so much quicker. Or if I, you know, answer the email right away, less people get cranky with me. Um, it's So it's a little bit of a procrastination thing. But also, yeah, if you don't like put in those structures that help you be healthy, it's so much harder to get back into them. Because, uh, yeah, I experienced the same thing working out. I just got back into it. And it's like, oh, no, I'm so weak. I'm, I can't do as many things as I used to be able to do. And then that gets, like, even more depressing. Like, well, I'll just skip it and play video games instead. Like, it's harder. Did this 45-pound like, weight get heavier? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I almost want to be like, like yell at everyone in the gym. I used to be much stronger than this, just so you know. Just so everyone's aware, this is a temporary situation. Oh, almost every room I walk into, I'm like, I used to look so much better. <laughs> and they have mirrors everywhere. You're yeah. like, oh, this is sad. <laughs> Planet Fitness, uh, come here so that you can see how you look from every angle. No, thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. So those have just been the two things that, are, that have been like kind of on my mind is like, I am hoping that all this work pays off in the long run to make me even less stressed than I was before the busy time, right? Um, But also, you know, there are things that I could put in place now, even while I'm busy, to not have to deal with these other problems later. Yeah. It's also tough. Like, so I've been trying to get back into working out. And I was like, oh, I have time. Looking at my watch, it's 9 o'clock at night. And it's like... Trying to do everything is so hard, too. So sometimes you do have to, like, kind of pick and choose. Like, for a while, I couldn't work out. But I was like, well, I can at the very least not eat fast food every day. I can manage that. And then eventually I can. So it's, it's, it is. It's just tough to get all these things together. and But they do pay off. Yeah. So my hope with all of this being said, all of this was a setup to a very simple joke. Are you ready for this? I'm so <laughs> no, proud of myself. Ahead. At the end of this busy season, I will be... Fat and happy. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. (laughs) (laughs) That's so stupid. (laughs) Have you ever felt called to share your faith with a friend, family member, co-worker, but felt nervous or afraid? Perhaps you didn't know exactly what to say or you didn't want to say the wrong thing. This is understandable and very normal. We've all been there. But when you love your faith and most especially when you love Jesus, you want to share that with others, right? Check out the new series from Ave Explores podcast, Sharing the Faith, where my friend Katie Prejean McGrady hosts and a variety of guests join her to explore how to use your gifts and talents to share the faith with others. Check out the Ave Explores podcast and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the new and exciting episodes. You can also sign up for all the free content at AveMariaPress.com or by following Ave Maria Press on social media. I have already started listening to this series and I love it. I've listened to every single episode that Ave Explores has put out. This isn't like, obviously it's an ad. Yeah, it's, it's great. You know, helps us pay the bills around here, but I really, really do love this podcast. Listen to every episode, even before they were sponsored. So I hope that you guys go check it out. Ave Explores, everyday faith for everyday people. Welcome back to Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Stroll, and that is Father Anthony Eugene Shirapa. Um, I'm sure you've seen these memes before where it's like a uh, like a cafeteria, like school cafeteria, right? Yeah. And at all the tables, it's like these all these famous people. It's like, oh, would you sit with, uh, uh, you know, it's usually someone bad and someone good. It's like, yeah, it's oh, tricky. Jim Caviezel, but you also have to sit with Mel Gibson, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> so that's like that. um, but. I saw one the other day on the old Twitter. Uh, This was shared by at Cam Samantha, and I think she stole it from someone else, and I can't give them credit because I can't read their little uh, watermark or whatever. That's the internet for you. Finders keepers. (laughs) So look, if you want to find the original person, go go follow Cam Samantha on Twitter and then figure (laughs) out where she got her information. But we're going to play it anyway. So it's this picture of, of of a cafeteria, and at every table, there are biblical characters. So we're going to go through and uh, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of sitting at each table. And then mm-hmm. we're going to decide by the end our top two. So we'll say I'll say my 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 second place, like if, you know, so and so got sick, if my number one got sick, I would sit at this table. And then my number one, who would I like to sit with? Pretty easy. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. OK. Table number one, Moses and Aaron. 
Moses and Aaron. What are the pros and cons of sitting with Moses and Aaron? So I see if I'm sitting with Moses and Aaron, I feel like it'll be a lot similar to when I hang out with some of my priest friends. It can be very easy for us to complain about work. And you know how you get, you know, with friends and who work at the same or similar gig and you start complaining all the time. I think that's exactly what that would be with Moses and Aaron. Like they have to deal with Israelites. I have to deal with Catholics. It's just so part of that would be cathartic. But I think part of it would just get old after a while. I wouldn't want to sit there maybe every day just when I need to vent. I feel like they'd be good people to vent to about the difficulty of ministry. Speaking of old, Moses, super old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and just come out like right at the beginning. Like I don't think this would be where I was sitting, who I'd yeah. sit with. The irony of me messing up that sentence while I'm literally thinking about bad sentences. Moses had yeah. a stutter. He literally had to. Yeah. God hired him for a job. And in the interview, Moses is like, yeah, but I can't talk good. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Oh, uh, So I think it, it would kind of be weird for a conversation. Essentially, what it would be is like Moses had a bunch of like party tricks, like magicians are cool. You know, he'd yeah. throw his, you know, his little cafeteria tray down and turn into a snake like that'd be pretty neat um mm -hmm. but one of the drawbacks is like aaron would have to like be the person speaking for him it's like oh you know he turned the staff into a snake or whatever uh but like i think the real reason is like if i had to go up to get go to the bathroom i'd come back and aaron would have made an idol out of my food <laughs> so <laughs> aaron i was gone for 60 seconds <laughs> Moses takes his tray and breaks it on the ground <laughs> in protest. All my food's gone. Thanks, Moses and Aaron. Okay, next table. Noah. Yeah. Noah. I mean, if we were in a flash flood warning, I'd probably go sit next to Noah. Yeah. Um, I mean, other than that, I think conversation skills. Like, I, I like having good conversation at lunch. Right. Conversation skills, I think, would be lacking because Moses was one of, let's see, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. He was one of eight people at some point. Like, yeah. So those conversations get, can get kind of old and repetitive. Like, oh, did you see the water today? And they're like, yeah. And that's all they talk about, you know? <laughs> so I think conversation would be a little lacking with Noah. But I mean, you know, you got to give it to him. He's a pretty, pretty holy dude. The only yeah. person in the world that heard God speaking to him about this, you know, terrible flood that was coming. So holy but boring, like most Catholics. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, maybe he wouldn't even want to talk about, like, I'd be interested in, like, what's the deal with the Ark and stuff. But if I'm, like, the only other person he's met in, like, 40 days, maybe he wants to ask me questions the entire time. Maybe he just doesn't stop asking questions. He wants to hear stories. He wants to hear something <laughs> new. He just he just keeps asking questions. I'm like, but but God spoke to you and built a boat. He's like, yeah, 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 I know the boat. I was there for a long time. I don't care. Tell me about this and that and the other thing. And maybe that would be disappointing. Also, uh, I would Tell make me sure about that we're speed not... boats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, no alcohol at that table because that gets him in trouble. So we Yo, couldn't drink yeah. together. Very true. Very true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're steering away from these first couple. <laughs> All right, number three, Abraham. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, just because he had a really crazy life and so many crazy things happened to him. Like, he, he, he just is like one of the first people in a long time to hear from actual God. And God's like, hey, move your whole life to a different place. And he's like, yeah. Like, what? I don't like moving to different parishes, let alone a whole different life. Like, how do you do that? Like, what was the deal when, like, you had to split open some animals and then God went through in a torch? Like, tell me about that. That's cool. Um, had some difficult, you know, maybe he could give me some uh, stories to help me with ministry with people who are married because he had some interesting <laughs> marriage situations. Yeah. And I was like, did you learn anything from this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you could do that. Um, uh, I mean, I could tell him, hey. Just so you know, all those promises are fulfilled in a weird sort of way. So good job. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> it was all worth it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you hit on the biggest thing that I would ask him. I think I would enjoy this conversation because all I would ask him is, ironically enough, it's going to sound weird. I would ask him marriage advice. Yeah. Because my primary question would be, how did you keep that woman married to you? When you did things like say, God spoke to me and said, I'm going to have a lot of kids. You're a bear and I'm going to go sleep with her. Like, how did you keep your wife after that? 
Um, how did you keep your wife after, you know, like literally the first story where they're like, hey, honey, God told me to move. Where? He didn't tell me, but we're going to pack everything up and start going that way uh, and yeah. hoping he has good GPS. Turn right now, you know. Um, <laughs> how did you keep your wife after every tribe you came upon? You said, this is your sister and kind of like, you know, pimped her out, you know. Like, mm -hmm. how did you stay married through all of that? <laughs> because I think I would like to know that information, not because I'm going to do those things, but because I make my own mistakes and would like yes. to know how you kept your marriage intact. I yeah, think absolutely. the answer is um, I was tremendously wealthy, which I can't use. <laughs> 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 but I would ask him anyway. I think that'd be a yes, fun conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, David. Uh, David, I think, is is one of the most one of my most fascinating people in the Bible. Like he's one of the first ones that we've got to that I would actually actually ask him about like biblical stories that we heard in his life, like the whole David and Goliath story. Like asking him how oh, yeah. he prepped for that. Like you know, what what was going through your mind? Like you know, you didn't <laughs> you didn't know this was going to happen when you woke up today. You know, you thought it was yeah. a random Tuesday. I would ask him about you know, um, I'd ask him about parenting because he had one of the most famous sons and all, but he also had some trouble with him. Um, mm -hmm. I would ask him about, you know, friendship, like his friendship with Jonathan and, and mm. dealing with people that hate you. Like, you know, like I would, I, I think he, he's the one so far that I'd ask him the most like lessons that he learned. Cause I have learned a ton of lessons about what it means to be like a Catholic, a man, a husband, a father, maybe not husband, husband's not the best one, but like, you know, like I've learned a lot from his story and I would want to hear from him what he learned from those stories. Yeah, um, and, and like the first and second Samuel are some of my favorite books in the Bible. So I'm saying, but also not just that. Like, I imagine he'd be a great storyteller because he was an artist. Like, he not only lived this insane, crazy life, uh, full of adventure, failure, success. I think he'd be just good at telling the stories. Like, that would just be really interesting. Um, and even like the little things, like, hey, it says in the Bible, the reason why you weren't super scared of Goliath is because you basically killed bears while you were, you know, did, was that, was, did you really like buy yourself a bear? <laughs> like, also, like, I would like to fight a bear one day. Do you have any tips about fighting bears? What's the, what's the secret? <laughs> you know, I feel like it'd just be endless, endless conversation. So far, he's, he's, he's pretty high up on my list so far. <laughs> We would watch, uh, what was it? What was that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio movie? Leonardo the DiCaprio, Revenant? Yeah. We, we'd, yes. watch, we'd watch that and be like, how true is this? Was this kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, he has he has something that makes rocks fire out of a stick? Yeah. And he's still lost to a bear? Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, that's what's so crazy. We, we don't have to get into the whole... It's funny. I actually brought up uh, Malcolm Gladwell earlier. Have you, have you ever read David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell? No. It's fascinating. Essentially, the whole point was that like, he was actually by by being a sling guy, like a slingshot yeah. guy, like those guys were like essentially like their archers at the time or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like they could throw those things like a hundred miles an hour and hit people in the head. So like <laughs> he was actually probably the most qualified. You you know like in war you have like your ground troops and you have your cavalry right. and then you have like your your ranged people. So it's like if you have a big brute, send your rage guy in. He can take him out <laughs> yeah, before he yeah. even gets close. <laughs> so, yeah, very, very smart. Okay, um, next we have Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph. Uh, I'm, I, I don't think I'd be welcome at the table. You know, like there's those, there's those tables in school where it's like. Like in especially by my senior year, I would sit at a bunch of different tables. Like I could go and sit with this group and that group or whatever. But like the holy group, it's one of those things. Like anytime I'm around really, really holy people, like I know that I'm the odd one out. You know, like which one of these is not like the it's it's Taylor. Like it's it's it. You know? <laughs> it's Taylor. Um, Taylor's. <laughs> so I think like. If, if I was in the mood of, like, just going to sit, like, you know, like, the whole, like, idea of being a disciple, like, sitting at someone's feet, like, sitting there, hearing them speak, like, I, like probably the holiest people here, you know, like, I would learn a lot, but it's just kind of the mood. What, what, if, if, I'm, I'm kind of looking to relax and have fun at lunch. If it was, like, my prayer time, I might go sit there, you know, but that's that's kind of where I am. Yeah, so I think, you know, every once in a while in a high school, you'll find like the one guy who's like the super cool guy, but also is super nice and likes to make people feel super welcomed. And like the reason why he doesn't even have like more friends is because people are too intimidated. Like I see Mary and Joseph as like, yes, intimidating from afar, 
but I bet they would be totally welcoming and super chill. Also, I imagine they have to have a good sense of humor because their life was so ridiculous. Like, they can't take themselves seriously. Like, their whole marriage situation, the fact that the runaway to each and stuff, they're like, there's no way they could possibly take themselves seriously with as crazy as their life was. Also, you know, I like to find out. How talkative is Joseph? That's the obvious question. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. how like, is he? Is, is he? Is he? Is he taking a nap at lunch? Which oftentimes I would do in high school. <laughs> Just eat my food and like go to court and nap for a while. Is he doing that? You know, like stories about like five year old Jesus. I would find those fascinating. So I definitely would be intimidated by that table, but uh, I'd be very tempted to see. I have another theory on what might happen. Is yeah. everything that I said at the beginning of like yes. them sitting, me listening. But in this scenario, it's just Mary talking. And while she's trying to give me this deep spiritual insight, uh, Joseph's just looking at the table like, this isn't sturdy. I could build it better. You know, like it just he keeps interrupting <laughs> exactly. Mary to talk about. The- <laughs> Joseph's like playing with his food, making a little house out of mashed potatoes. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So I, that, that, that's now that I have that scenario in my mind, I might enjoy it a little bit more. Okay. Mm-hmm. Number six, Elijah and Elisha, or Elisha. I, I always say Elisha because it's like you can differentiate a little bit more. Even if it's That's how ha- I say yeah. too is Elisha, Elijah and Elisha. Elisha. Uh, I'd be super intimidated by this table. Um, these these two guys scare me. They scare me in the Bible. Like Elijah takes out, or is it Elijah or Elisha who takes out all those prophets of Baal? It's, it's the, Elijah. Uh, t- yeah. Yeah. But it's like these guys are hardcore. I'd be super intimidated by them. Uh, just they they live these like they're on the run a lot of the times. They're they're getting in trouble. Um, I, yeah, I'm I'm not sitting at this table. I'm just too scared of Elijah and Alicia. <laughs> uh, dude, this this is my like number one seed coming in. I might be swayed by oh, yeah. The, this is my number one seed coming in, and it's partly the beginnings of one of the stories you brought up. So mm-hmm. two of the most famous stories of Elijah, nobody realizes are connected. There's the one that you said where he where it's the competition of who can call down fire, the the real God or Baal, right? And mm-hmm. there's like whatever, four three hundred, four hundred prophets of 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 Baal, the fake God. It's a hilarious story. We don't get into the whole thing. I've, I've talked about it yeah. at length. But there's that story of Elijah where he calls down fire, God sends fire, it proves him, and then what does he do? He murders all of the three hundred to four hundred prophets, right? Yeah. The next story is also one of the most famous stories. It's the Elijah. This is this is literally what happens right after that story. He goes to hide in a cave because everyone Jezebel wants to kill him now because they, he literally just murdered 340 people, which I have questions <laughs> about. Did they just line up and they're like, "Okay, we lost"? You know, like, he's slitting their throat into the river. Like how <laughs> rules are rules, <laughs> you win. <laughs> yeah. It's just fascinating. But the next story is that God comes by. He's in the cave, and God comes by in the fire, and he comes by in the storm, he comes by in all of this, and then he comes by in the still silence, and Elijah falls on his face, and he's like, that's that's where God was. That's yeah. the moment that God fired him. He fired Elijah to bring on Elisha, because mm-hmm. what Elijah did, he, he called down God's power. He, one, he tested God, but two... Yeah. He, he proved that God was real, and then everyone that watched it, he murdered them instead of having them convert, which is the whole point of being a prophet, right? He murders them. And so he's proving to Elisha in that time, it's like, I'm not in the big antics. I'm not in the calling down mm. fire. I'm in the still mm. softness of your heart. He literally says, you're fired. And then he says to go to find Elisha and to give your blessing to him. And Elisha yeah. gets a double portion of... Of what Elijah had, right? Yeah. So sitting with these two guys, it would be, this is Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Who's the best player of all time? (laughs) Yeah. And just, I would just be sitting there and smiling and asking questions and poking and prodding. I want these two to fight. Because Elisha had the <laughs> Elisha had the double portion. Elijah's the most famous, right? Yeah. So where a lot of people think he's the greatest prophet, but Elisha got the double portion. He's doubly as good. As Elijah. So here's the question. Oh, Does Alicia have like double the portion of mashed potatoes on his tray? Probably. Like, Alicia's got Probably. all his food yeah. in comparison. And then he looks at me, the fat boy across, because I'm trying to yeah. decide which one is better. And he's like, here, yes. fat boy, you want half of you double your portion? I'm like, yes, I do. And then, you know, he knows, he knows <laughs> yes. what he's doing. Um, I just think it'd be so, so much drama. Oh, it'd just be an exciting lunch for sure. That would be. Okay. Um, let's see. Who, who is next? We got, what, a few more. 
Um, Paul and Timothy is the next one. Paul and Timothy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, For me, like, this is, as far as, like, this is a business lunch for me. This is this is a workshop for me. Like the fact that you have Paul and Timothy. So Paul who who knows what he's doing, who's training Timothy. So I would get like the companionship of someone who's just learning how to be a cleric, basically. And then you've got the master Paul there, so I can like uh commiserate with Timothy and also learn from Paul. Also, Paul is such a dynamic person in the uh in his letters. He goes from like incredibly stern to incredibly loving. Uh, he uses humor in his, like, I just want to meet him. Uh, and there's all, all kinds of crazy opinions about him from different biblical scholars. So I just want to get the real deal. Uh, also like how young is Timothy? He's like my age, I assume close or maybe he's younger. Who knows? Like, I just would find that to be like, if I had to pick one person to talk to, I guess other than Mary and Joseph, if it sounds weird, but like these are like the guys that are on the ground doing the ministry after you know in the Acts of the Apostles. I would want to sit at this table. Yeah, uh, Paul is one of my favorite characters in all of scriptures. Has one of the coolest stories. Um, wrote two thirds of the New Testament. I mean, pretty big deal, you know. Like, mm-hmm, so I mm-hmm. think I was, I, and I think he's good at having conversations, and like he's good at like he would be good at speaking. To me, because he's good mm-hmm. at speaking to all, I have become all things to all people, right? Like he he talked about the the the, the tomb of the unknown God, and he's like that that God that's that we we serve the God that you think you've that you haven't known this whole time. Like I think yeah. he'd be really good at talking to people in today's age, which is like my whole what I'm trying to do with this whole thing is like talk to people how they would like to hear the gospel now or be open to hear the gospel now. But primarily, I might not sit at the table. I might not. But I would definitely walk up and ask these two a question. And it it, it involves one of my favorite Bible verses in the entire scripture. Paul, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, some of the most important lines, some of the most memorized lines in all of scripture, wrote in his second letter to Timothy, he wrote three beautiful, eloquent chapters that involve, you know, God and grace and Jesus and how we could serve him and how much he loves us and all these things, right? But towards the end of that final chapter, He sends in his letter to Timothy. Also, after all of this good holy stuff, also, when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the the parchments. So what I want to know, Timothy, this is in holy writ. This is inspired word of God. Did you indeed return (laughs) Paul's coat to him as he requested in the Bible? (laughs) Also, it's like, is that his lucky cloak? Like, yeah. what's the... Uh... It's his cloak of invisibility. That's how he didn't get martyred for so long. <laughs> Listen, I got stoned three times wearing this cloak, and I didn't die. I need it back. <laughs> I don't think you should insinuate that Paul did drugs on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You said it was a shield. I said it was an invisibility cloak. But we're both yes. in the same wavelength of like, this is what kept him from not being murdered. Yes, it's so obviously often. a cloak. <laughs> it, it wasn't his Roman citizenship. It no. was the coat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, it was a nice jacket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, um, the next one is the apostles, which I like. This might be it. This might be it for me. Like being able to sit at the table with these guys who spent three years with Jesus, and it's one of those mm-hmm. things. Like, kind of one of the themes is like I get intimidated sitting with really holy people. I wouldn't be intimidated with the apostles. <laughs> they're just dudes that Jesus happened to walk by while they were at work and said, "Hey, come with me." And they're like, "Okay," you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I I could fit in at this group. I think I'd have a lot of fun. There's 12 people, so it's not as much pressure on the conversation. Like, I'm just one of the guys. Like. Mm-hmm. Is Judas there? Is he already there? Like, we don't know. You know? Um, <laughs> did, he, did he leave lunch early for some reason? Right, Everyone gets yeah. a little nervous. <laughs> uh, so I, I think I would really enjoy that conversation. It would be, it would fit me very well. I'm sure there would be some holiness in that conversation, but also a lot of fun and laughs and loudness and drinks and all these sorts of things. I think I'd have yeah. a blast. Yeah, this is definitely the most rambunctious table by far. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely, and it's also, I mean, in the most real sense, it is the cool kids table. Yep. This is the inner circle. Yep. These are the guys, the dudes. Um, oh, you know what would be like, sad? You said inner circle. What if we're sitting at the table and we're having a great time and then Jesus comes over and takes Peter, James, and John and they leave? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, right to the heart. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's that. Um, 
And uh, I mean, just on a very human level, it would be too much activity for me. Like to meet 12 new people at one time, my introvert, I would just, I would just, it would be a waste of my time and energy because I, I couldn't handle that table. Like I'd like to get to know those guys and be friends with them, of course. But if I got one lunch period, introvert Father Anthony's not going to be able to handle the 12 disciples all at once. Here's the thing, though. I, I think you'd be better at it than you think because I've mm. been at conferences with you where you are meeting people who you know. You just never mm -hmm. met them in person before. You're like, yeah. oh, I know this speaker. I know this podcaster. You don't know them all. You haven't met them, but you know who they are. And like, to be fair, we both know about half of the apostles. I don't think either of us could name all 12. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, we know a lot about Peter, James, John, yes. uh, you know, all, all these, uh, about half of them, right? Matthew, yeah. you know, these guys. But the other half, the, the other half would be new <laughs> and then half we would yeah. know. So I think you'd be better than you think. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, the next one, we've only got two left. Um, all right, all right. this one's weird. I think we're going to skip this one because it's Peter by himself. Isn't he one of the apostles? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, could you wait, imagine wait, wait. once Why he becomes Pope, <laughs> once he becomes Pope, they're like, yeah, we don't like him. Send him over there. <laughs> Does he have like a very fancy like seat at his own lunch table? Like, like a throne? He's right. just sitting there yeah. feeling really awkward. <laughs> Is he sitting upside down at the lunch table? Oh. People don't want to approach him because of that. <laughs> he's the first Pope. He's doing his, uh, it's the Angelus. It's lunchtime. It's yes. noon. He's doing the public Angelus. I guess that's why he's fine. Is he just glaring at Paul who's right across the, the, the oh. thing from him? <laughs> <laughs> that. He is right next to Paul. Um, Are they arguing right now? <laughs> is this the lunch that Peter got in trouble for? Yes, oh, maybe. No, 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 no. Peter learned his lesson. That's why he's by himself. He separated himself uh, in, in the whole thing where he got in trouble with Paul. It's like, yeah. oh, he went and sat with the wrong people and, and uh, observed the old Jewish traditions. And now he's like, I'm never doing that again. I'm just not going to sit with anybody. I'm going to be safe. <laughs> I'm not getting canceled again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's not even one of the choices. We're going to move on. The last okay. one. Okay. The last one, Adam and Eve. Um, my first question would be, are they clothed? <laughs> my first question too, yeah. immediately. If like, they're not clothed, I'm not going anywhere near them, you know? No. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah. But if they're, if they are clothed, because God gives them clothes at the end of that uh, story, <laughs> he gives them like, you know, uh, but, uh. You said but twice ooh. since we talked about their nakedness, by the way. <laughs> Uh, who knows the first one you said but i thought you were just pointing it out <laughs> <laughs> that's i'm just walking my table but. <laughs> uh i would i mean who i think this would be the most formative thing for me what like explain because i would have to forgive them to sit at their table like i would have to like go to them and to find out like who they actually are as people to like empathize with them, to see, you know, do they really understand the consequences of their actions? Uh, the reason why, you know, there's sin in the world is because they had everything and said no to God. Could I forgive them for that? Could I sit at the table and break bread with them? I think it'd be the hardest table to sit at, but I think it'd be important for me spiritually. That's what I'm thinking. There's no freaking way. I am walking by them like, screw you, as I go sit next to the apostles, <laughs> right next to them. You yeah. messed it up for everybody, you nerds. Yeah. You know, <laughs> put on some clothes. Uh, yeah, there's no way. Okay, so we have we have gone over time on this. We have to we have to decide our two. Um, I yeah. have decided my two. Have you decided who are your top two? Yeah, you go first. Okay, my I'm, I'll do my number two. My my number two is going to be for all the reasons that I said, Elijah and Alicia. Like just that. Their whole story, one, they were great prophets and they had some really cool stories to share, but mostly argue like the, the Michael Jordan versus LeBron James thing. Just poke poke both yeah. of them and try to see oh, who's actually better. Who's the better prophet? Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my number two is David. Uh, I think it'd be the most fun table to sit at. It's the one, like I said, just to hear a storytelling, hang out with David. Uh, he's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. So he's, he's uh, number two, but he's up there. I think it's important also to know if Eve has her clothes on or not, because if she doesn't, it's going to distract David a lot. He's he's. It is. Has it's true. Eve. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to be on the other side yeah. of the cafeteria. Yeah. He's going to send. David, why are you standing on the table? He's going to send yeah. Adam why into battle. To <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Adam battle. David stops standing on the table to get a better look at her. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, and my number one. My number one is going to be the apostles for all the reasons I said. I think I'd have so much fun. I think I would get some holiness out of it. I think it. I think it'd be a really good time. I think it'd be a really good time. 
yeah, I can totally see that. My number one's gonna be Mary and Joseph. Because at the end of the day, it's like I, I, it's like it's mom and dad. I want to hang out with them. I want to like get to know the stories about Jesus, uh, like and just they've both played such an important like intimate role in my spiritual life. Uh, to have that experience, I, I think that's what I would do. I don't know if I'm in a high school cafeteria. I think I'd rather sit with my friends than my mom and dad. As much as I love them, it's not the time <laughs> or the place. It's not. Oh, because the- you had those. You had those at, in high school. Oh. Moms and uh, you didn't have a mom and dad in high school. No, I had that, but not friends. Oh, that was the joke. Oh, the joke was I had no friends. <laughs> it's a great joke. Yeah, it everyone was laughed. Hilarious. So funny. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, um, I hope that you all learned something during this. <laughs> well, I had fun. This is a lot of fun. I hope I enjoyed it for sure. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Grotto Network. The Grotto Network is a platform that shares stories to inspire our generation of Catholics, whether you are falling away or a daily mass goer and everywhere in between. They also provide content that will help you navigate your crazy life uh, with everything from advice on finding an apartment to dealing with toxic friends, uh, from finding sustainable food to appreciating college football. We just did an episode about that. Should have done that ad then. Whoops. Uh, with everything from you know dating advice to finding purposeful work, their Instagram account is so much fun to follow. You can follow them at Grotto, G-R-O-T-T-O Network. Share it with your friends over on the Instagram. They post daily. It's such good stuff. Guys, go follow him. What are you waiting for? Welcome back to Forte Catholic. Uh, I am Taylor Stroll. That is Father Anthony Sharapa. Father Anthony, I have a um, moral dilemma for you that that happened with me the other day. That's exciting. I deal with moral dilemmas on a daily basis. Glad my moral dilemmas are exciting for you. (laughs) I've not been excited about this. Let me tell the story what happened. And then you can tell me, did I do something wrong? Is is the primary question. Yeah. Because I've been thinking about it. Because I did it without even thinking. Um, I was at I was at a bar. That's not the sinful thing. I was sitting next to these people. I was getting set up. I host trivia now at, our, at a local bar. It's so much fun. I do it every other. I would love for you to host trivia. I love trivia. I think you'd be a great host. Oh, we have way too much fun. We have way too much fun. Um, well, there's this new couple. This couple that hadn't played trivia before. They're sitting right next to me, and so as I'm setting up, I'm introducing myself and talking to them or whatever. And I pull up my computer, which like the the background of my computer um, has this it's it's the whole background is the picture and it has straight out of heaven, straight out of heaven, like the straight out of Compton thing. And instead of the five guys from the straight out of Compton picture, it's five saints put on their like on their heads. Right. Like it's 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 a lot of people probably seen it. It's been my background for years. So he sees that and he recognizes that it's a. Well, well, one heaven, so he knows Christian, and then he starts yeah. looking, and he starts recognizing some of the people, and he's like, oh, so you're Catholic, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I am, which is like, I'm in a public place. I'm not representing the church. I'm rep- I'm literally at work for another company that's not a Catholic company. So I'm like, okay, yeah. you know, I'm not hiding the fact that I'm Catholic, but I'm not, like, promoting it either. It's just not the time and place, yeah. right? Um, so... We start talking about it, and he's like, "Oh yeah, like we both we both used to grow up Catholic. These people are probably in their fifties, uh, if I had to guess, fifty fifty five. Um, they're like, oh, we both grew up Catholic, um, but we've been going to a non denominational or Baptist church for for like twenty twenty five years or whatever, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like, where do y'all go? And they're like, oh, we actually haven't really found a place here. We just moved here in the last year. We used to go to this big non denominational church in Houston." And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm familiar with it. Like, that's cool. It's a cool place, you know? And so they were like, yeah, we haven't really found a place here. So, like, I I was like, I don't like it when people don't go to church. I would like for people to go to church, right? Yeah. So I, I am well-connected here in the area, and I know, like, the two or three, like, non-denominational churches that I have been to and enjoyed or that I would suggest for people. I'd either know the pastor or know the youth pastor or whatever. I know they'd be yeah. good places. I have Protestant friends here in town that, like, they love their church. So right, like immediately, they're like, I'm like, they didn't ask, but they're like, oh yeah, we haven't really found a place here. So I was like, have you tried these three places? And I listed off like the top three, in my opinion, non-denominational churches in the area. And then like almost like we had the conversation like almost immediately. The first time I get out of the conversation, I'm like back in my own head and not in a conversation. I'm like, yeah. did I make a mistake? Here are these hmm. two people that that grew up Catholic. So I could have suggested come to come to my parish or go to this other parish or, or go to go to you know these are the top three catholic churches in the, in the, yeah, which yeah, would yeah. be funny because there's five so it really only leave out two you know but like mm. you know like i <laughs> yeah. didn't suggest a catholic church um yeah i have other thoughts but i'll leave it there what do you think 
Yeah, a lot of things. Uh, one, you know, it's funny because you say you're not representing the Catholic Church, but which is fine because you're just doing a gig. Um, but it's like a small level, like you didn't bother changing your background because that's just who you are. Right. So that's kind of like just the normal way people evangelize. Like you just are who you are and Catholic stuff will pop up because that's kind of who you are as a person. So I thought that was neat, just that interaction. Uh, and also on a very like normal human level, like, oh, you go to this kind of church. I know this kind of church. You can go there. Right. So on a certain like just conversation level, it makes perfect sense. You did what you did. Uh, also, you know, I would never and I've, I've, I've bothered people with this advice before. I would never tell someone who, who's been away from the church for a long time or is not familiar with the church, just be like, oh, just go to our church by yourself, mm -hmm. right? Because mass is different than Protestant worship services. Like, you know, if a Catholic is new to an area, they don't wait around to go to church on Sundays. They're like, where's a mass? For them, it's like not so much church. Like, I need to go to mass for most Catholics, right? And then, okay, uh, I've been to mass a few places. I want to kind of be more part of the parish, maybe, you know. Um, but, like, we go to church for a specific kind of worship for the mass and the mass is for catholics and so it's not necessarily very friendly to people who don't know what's going on uh it's not like you know a protestant worship service is pretty accessible to anybody um it's it's not a liturgy it's just different right so in a certain sense it's easier for people to wander into a protestant church than it is a catholic church uh, we as Catholics, and I don't, I'm not, I don't think we should change the mass at all. The mass is, is exactly what's supposed to be. Um, I might change some of the music and some of the preaching and some of that stuff, right? But you, mass is good. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> Suggesting changing the pre uh, the preaching at masses where you preach is hilarious. <laughs> I would love to have someone better than me do it. It'd be great. Uh, it's so much easier to say mass without preaching, but that's a whole other uh, topic. Um, like, we have to do other stuff. Like, we have to do other activities. Like, we have to have those welcome everybody activities. But it can't be the Mass, because the Mass just isn't that. Um, even, you know, the idea in RCIA, when you're becoming Catholic, there's an option for people to leave during the Eucharist. Because, like, you can't get anything out of, you can't get the same thing out of this as you will later, right? So it's just different. And I think people need to accept that. Um, and so... But, like, you're, you're a little conscious when, like, wait a second, should I have done more? Um, so I don't think, like, my first thought is, like, I don't think you did anything wrong. I like that you called but my conscience the, little. <laughs> that hurt a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> your little, little, little voice, like, hey, buddy, have you listened to me lately? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I think, like, even just saying something along the lines of, like, hey, I'm pretty biased. You could come to my church. Um, just to show them that, like, we do want more people. It's very unlikely they would, but you never know, just to throw something out there. Or like, hey, if you want to talk more about something, like throw it out there. But, you know, in the meantime, there are these other churches that are what you're used to. So I don't think what you did was like terrible, but I think they could have taken like a half step more. That's my initial thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of where I am too. Um, I think in, I think in hindsight, what I would have, the only thing I would have changed is... Oh, like, you know, because the like I di literally did it without thinking like, oh, you go to this kind of church. Like you said, I suggest those kinds of churches. Yeah, I think what I could have done is like, oh, you know, another option would be like, I love I love my parish. Now we've got a great we've got a great new priest. If you want to try it out, uh, we go at 11 on Sunday. We sit in the back if you want to come sit with us and then we can go to lunch after, you know, like I think yeah. the lunch after is a lot more welcoming than like you said, like. Ma right. Well, like one mass for like Protestants or people who haven't been Catholic can be really strange. But these yes. people were former Catholics. Like they would understand true mass, right? The gist. So I think I think having the other options, I think actually makes that option more viable. Because if mm -hmm. I would have just been like, come to my Catholic church, there's no other option. You know, like yeah. I think they would have been completely turned off. Because like my whole thought process is if they're not going to church at all, I thought that was the best bet to get them to go to church and to like spend yeah. time with Jesus. You know, I, yeah, I think absolutely. if I just would have suggested St. Joseph's Catholic Church, which is where I go, they probably wouldn't have gone, you know, right. but, and then they'd be not going to any church at all. And like, mm -hmm. I'd much rather them go to a non-denominational church than no church at all. Right. Like it's not even close. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting because like I had this, I had a similar conversation about nine months ago and it, and it's this part of the conversation starting to change for me. I would not have invited outsiders to my parish before my current pastor. 
Mm. I never have and I never would have because mm. I, as a practicing Catholic, was struggling at my local parish, right? So it's like, why would yeah. I invite an outsider or someone who had reasons to leave to some place that was probably pretty similar to the reasons that they left? I'm assuming, yeah. right? But I, but there are a lot of options, so we'd probably yeah. strike a chord somewhere. But like, our new pastor is awesome, and he's very um, like evangelical in the Catholic term of that, right? Evangelistic, yeah. you know, that's the that's the, yeah. the modern word, but like literally evangelical. Like, he wants to bring in people who aren't just Catholic. He is taking to heart the I am the pastor of the area of my parish, not just the yeah. Catholics who come to church on Sunday. So. Um, there's a there's another conversation I had about nine months ago, uh, may, maybe six months ago, of a Catholic who had tried a bunch of Catholic parishes here, who, who we had gone to the same church growing up, and they're like, we haven't found a place like that. And I was like, if we're being honest, I, we've had a lot of the same struggles here, but yeah. come try this new one, and then we can go to lunch after, you know. So like, yeah, I, th I think that can be welcome because it's like, oh, if you haven't been in a while, or if you've never been, you're gonna have questions. Let's go have lunch after, and at least you yeah. can you know enjoy that part of it. So. Yeah, and it's tough too because, like, they're like I said, for for Catholics, at the end of the day, usually what keeps us like in our darkest moments, it's like, well, I don't want to go so I I want the Eucharist on some level. That's the thing I want. I want Jesus, right? And sometimes that's the only string that's holding us, you know, to going to church. Um, that's not ideal, you know. <laughs> you want to like be excited to go right, to mass, right. right? So, and also it's also tough because so often there's so much focus. And so many programs stuff about like evangelizing and welcoming people and say, like, okay, we have to make sure we're welcoming them to something good. Right. Uh, we have something good. Are we expressing it the right way? And that's that's a, it's a tricky thing for a lot of Catholics. It really is. It's yeah. tough. I empathize. Yeah, it's what I've talked about this at length. And we won't have to go into it again. But I, it has bothered me for a long time. The excuse of like, oh, you just go to mass to receive the Eucharist. It's like, that's not all mass is. It's not all mass is. If it was, right. we'd skip the whole first section and we'd skip some to, at the end too. Like, um, we should as a church be giving our best to the mass and not making that a f dumb excuse of like, we should be giving our best to the greeters, to the ushers, to the music, to the lectors, to the preaching, to the how reverently we are praying the mass, like the priests are praying the mass. Like, we should be working on that to do as best as we can. And I, I haven't seen that in a lot of places, but ultimately that was just kind of my thought on it. it there is that caveat of like, I, if I could go back, I would change it just a little bit, right. To make mass also, an option and go to lunch with me. You know, if you're good at trivia, maybe they come back to trivia and they know you're not a bad guy. Right. So maybe this is just the first step. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, well, cool. I enjoyed today's show. Um, it was good. Uh, it was fun in this last segment for people watching on YouTube, watching you just kind of like move and disappear and reappear. Your internet kind of cut out at the end. We could hear yeah, you the whole yeah. time, but your face you, you look like a, you look like you were doing like the the jujitsu or whatever you did growing up. You know, karate. And you're like, hey yeah, hey yeah. I'm shinier now. Something with the lights. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, the audio is great though. It's the whole here, Italian because, uh, thing. You're speaking with yeah. your hands and you're shiny. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all for our show today. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed recording it. I'll be back next week. See ya! Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button wherever you are listening or if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. Ding! Um, and if you want to stay connected with us throughout the week, you can do so on social media. We've got at Forte Catholic on Facebook and Twitter and at Taylor Schroll, S-C-H-R-O-L-L -L, on Instagram and Twitter as well. Also, in the professional world, we've got a LinkedIn now at Forte Catholic, at Taylor Schroll on TikTok, all the places, guys. We live everywhere, wherever you live. We hope that you will, uh, you know, enjoy some clips of the show and uh, connect with us. We'd love to get to know you. So uh, have a great rest of your week, guys. Bye.